Hey kids, welcome to Jeremy's World. Today's guest is Frank Anderson. He does traditional West African drumming and dance. Thanks for coming on the show, Frank. Thank you, Jeremy. Check it out. When did you first go to Africa? I first went um, in December of 2001. I went to Konakri, Guinea, which is uh, the Republic of Guinea is in West Africa, and I was in the capital city of Konakri, which is on the Atlantic coast. And I studied, basically I was going to school. There is a teacher there named, a drum teacher named Famudu Konate, who every winter uh, has courses that you can go and, and take and you stay in his compound. It's like dorms, you know, so you stay there, you get fed, you have five hours of drum class every day. So I, that was my first time I did that was back in 2001 and then I went and did it three other times after that too. And I, each time I stayed, twice I stayed for two months and twice I stayed for three months. But it's pretty intense because you were in class every day for five hours and then you're studying all these different rhythms and stuff and then um, on top of that if you don't speak French or any languages of West Africa like Maninka Khan or Susu people don't speak not many people there speak English so another part of the work of going there is having to learn how to communicate with people you have to learn French okay. that's the easiest thing if you don't already know French then you have to just learn some French while you're there because that's the the French colonized that area, and so a lot of folks still speak French there. But now it's independent. It became independent in 1958 from France. What's the biggest purpose of drumming and dancing? Africa? Well, there's traditions, you know, a lot of the um, important things in life, uh, people play music for, for different rites of passage, like marriages, farming, and a lot of the, the music and dance that I studied comes from Maninka people. People heard, might have heard of Mandingo people, but in Guinea they call themselves Maninka. Maninka people, they're the ones who have djembes and dunums. You see djembes here a lot now. Um, but Maninka people are farmers. So they farm rice and all kinds of root crops, and they also have livestock. And so when they're doing farm work, they have a whole bunch of different um, rhythms and dances that are for, you know, like the drummers go out into the fields while, while people are farming just to help them, you know, just to give them some energy to to work because it's hard work, you know, you're in the tropical sun hoeing the ground, you know, it's all work by hand. 
So there's a lot of farming rhythms. And then there's just celebration rhythms, just for dancing, just for the, the joy of dancing. There's a very famous dance from Manika people in, in Guinea that's called, we call it here Dunumba, but really they just call it Dunun or Dununfo there. And it's a dance that's a very ancient dance where men would uh, prove their dominance within the in the village, you know, like the most, the strongest, they call it the strong man's dance. So it used to be, um, and, and I suppose it still is, but in old times, there was a very serious hierarchy of who the strongest men in the, in the village were. And it was also a way, I think, for um, a controlled way of men to work out their aggressions toward each other. You know, they're doing this very strong dance. And they also actually used to whip each other, you know, like, if a, if a younger one wanted to try to join the next circle of the, the you know, like the next set of really strong men, mm -hmm. he would dance backward toward that next set. And if he could withstand the whipping, then he could join them. So it's kind of, it sounds kind of brutal, but you know, that's life, you know, life is hard mm -hmm. in, in that part of the world, you know, when you have to be farmers and, and you have to be really strong. So that was a big part of the thing. Now, because you know, of modern times, a lot of people have moved to the cities in the region and they just love the rhythms. And so now, a lot of times, if you go, for example, to a wedding in the city, like in the city of Konakuri or the city of uh, Kankan or the city of Bamako, a lot of folks will get together and play a lot of these traditional rhythms. But it doesn't mean that they're doing a circumcision. It doesn't mean that there is a marriage. They're just dancing because they love the rhythms. They're just like, they love these. Those, they love those grooves, and so they're and they're, and they're, and they're, they're great dancers, and so they love those dances. But the tradition still is it still is intact, especially in the villages. Besides being such a great drummer and dancer, Frank is also a great blues singer. Let's take a listen to that. Check it out. Well, Frank, thanks for preserving all these wonderful African dances and uh, rhythms and sharing them with us here so we can check it out. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Right on. Okay. See you next week on Jeremy's World. <laughs> <laughs>